Welcome back to Navigating the Shift, where we two intuitives, me and me, <laughs> Sarah and Annabelle, and today we're going to talk about how we know that we are already well into the shift. What are the signs politically, in nature, uh, with disclosures and science and stuff like that? How do we know? And what we can do with that knowledge to facilitate the shift continuing at a, as quick as possible and as smoothly as possible of a way. And let's kick it off with uh, Q. Q. What the hell? Good place to start. Q's been talking a lot, posting mm. a lot of stuff. And one of the things that was just yesterday, I think, uh, was I don't have the quote. We can pop it in. Uh, that the next 21 days are going to be big, big things happening. Mm. And as we know, that doesn't necessarily mean we thought DeFi was going to be, everyone's going to be uh, arrested on, on, on D5, and that didn't happen on December D5? 5th. And that, December 5th, right. Just sort of the idea that things are, are warming up. And David Wilcock, who was interviewed on uh, Edge of Wonder, which is a great program, to self self-proclaimed dorks who just want to wake up the world and they're very funny that sounds uh, similar to below. something i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah hmm. Hmm. i don't know what you're talking we're about we're not I dorks feel that kind no of. we're far too cool to be dorks oh yeah <laughs> actually yeah, before I'm you so carry cool. on with david wilcock just going back to q was um there still seems to be some stuff in the in the mainstream media talking uh, questioning oh it's just a big conspiracy thing it's just uh misleading people trying to raise their hope for no reason and uh it's so funny and then and then q starts putting up yesterday a whole bundle of photographs that he's very clearly with the president in uh, is it hanoi they've gone to to meet um north korean president so um you, you you don't just join in on those things or you don't you can't forge those photographs so he's whoever it is right. that's that's posting those photographs is right there has been on air force one going to hanoi and is part of those meetings very very interesting and posts on the cue board and tweets on uh trump's twitter have been coinciding like to the minute mm, mm. Uh, what they say zero delta delta means the distance di time and distance and time uh between one event and the other so it's you know right after the other they're doing this whole series of deltas the thing on david wilcock uh that he's had prophetic dreams all his life and he noticed there's like a 20-year cycle and he had things happen where he he would was very religiously recording his dreams each day, even though often they would make no sense. And for instance, he got a dream that said, what, what is the refrigerator zero? There's a brand of refrigerator that has zero in it. Anyway, zero point, it's not what it's called. He said, pick, get another, pick a different person or something. And 20 years later, he's living in a place, he's renting and they've got that type of refrigerator and it's going out and the Landlord wants to have a certain person repair it, and he looks at it and says, oh, get a different person. Mm. So it was, like, really precise. Mm. Mm. And 20 years ago, and he's looking at his dreams now, his messages that he were getting was, everything you've been working for all these years is now happening. Sounds so good. It does. So many of us, all of us, everybody who's here – Paying attention to what's going on, everybody watching this <laughs> anytime, you all came here specifically in order to facilitate this shift. And it's been a long haul up until this point. But uh, I think things are, things are coming around. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the, the idea of looking into the future, um, I mean, there's many possibilities, as we already know, but it's becoming, we've, we've bypassed the worst of it. Uh, I think we've mentioned that before, haven't we, the Nostradamus mm -hmm. stuff, and also how many of the ancient texts talked about how in order to get to where we are now, um, the most likely probability would have been nuclear war, uh, uh, the, the, the rise of an antichrist, who has not, we've not seen him. So I'm assuming that whoever saw Dolores Cannon's work back in the mid-1990s recognized who that person was and took him out, I reckon. Um, yeah, that's that uh, if, if if this is the case that if, that we had this most probable for thousands of years people could see this most probable likely pathway 
and that didn't happen. And we didn't have to go through nuclear war. Gaia didn't need to, have to defend herself and bring this man to his knees and drown him with a big wave or anything like that. That did not need was to that, Was that a prophecy? Yes. That didn't happen? That's right. Um, Got it. Uh, so we've managed to get there and save all the people, you know, so far. <laughs> I don't know if anything else is going to be happening, but I think we've, we've got, we've got a much better, a, an amazing idea. Do you remember in um, Men of Black, Men in Black, there was the, the guy from 5D, the guy from the future, and he wore his pajamas. I'll find a picture and I'll put him up. But he had this whole description that he was giving Will Smith's character about the amazing so unlikely that a, in a particular baseball game, this team was going to win with this one final throw. And all the, the slight details that changed the possibility to the, this incredible, unlikely outcome, but it did actually happen. And those, that, those men in black movies are amazing. And in fact, there's so many movies that just give you all these little tips along the way that make you go, oh, yeah, I get that. I understand that because I saw it in a movie 10 years ago or whatever. Um, this yep, whole idea, truth, this unlikely. Telling the truth. In, yeah. We, we got there. We got there through this most unlikely pathway in a much nicer way yes. of doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you could say one of the biggest signs that we are well into the shift and we are on the positive uh, pathway to the, the, the new earth, the future that we all came here to uh, create and install in this reality is that we haven't had world war. That's it. World War Three hasn't happened. Mainstream I mean, media have constantly gone on about it and just didn't happen, right? Nope. nope. And on a smaller level, even as we're recording here today, uh, Trump is talking with the uh, North, North Korean Korea. president. And when they're no longer threatening to nuke us, um, I know a guy who lives in Japan, or I follow him on Twitter, we, we twit back and forth occasionally, but um, <laughs> I don't think that's the right word, but I don't twit. care. I'm you a dork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a twit. <laughs> but uh, he said they used they were getting warnings of incoming missiles coming from Korea. And you know, how many times were people just terrified and hiding underground and that that is just doesn't happen anymore. So mm. things are shifting. So whether they were threats or whether they were real and the missiles were taken out, which is what the impression I got is that a lot of there were a lot of missiles that were meant to be going between countries that one that was heading towards Hawaii and they got all their big message system and suddenly we went, oh, no, 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 no. <coughs> Somebody fine, pushed fine. the button that he yeah. wasn't supposed to oh, push. Oh, look, yeah. And, then, and then, then we see proof of it in a photograph. I think that was from Q. And then, yes, they managed to take it out. So, yeah, somebody was trying to, to start wars. And it makes you wonder how many times has that happened? World War II started from the assassination of somebody an archduke, I think, in a carriage. How many times have wars been started by people who will profit from it? Uh, what are other signs? Okay, I live in Santa Rosa, California, and we have been having so much rain after a decade of drought. California is getting a lot of rain. I believe it's like 140, 150% of normal statewide. Right. It's rained so much that a town near here called Gurneyville is surrounded by water. It's an island now, the uh, Russian River. Uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Uh, blame, blame, it Russian Russian River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blame it on the Russians. That's blame it on the Russians. Blame it on the Russians. Got to be it. Oh, God. Uh, so, so what do you to think? Me, yeah, what's your ideas on what, that? Because there's several ways that could happen, right? I think, here's my sense of it, is that the cabal no longer has control of the satellites that were causing us to have this drought. And Mother Nature is trying to make up for years of drought. The aquifers, especially in the, the Central Valley where all the food is grown, mm. they dry up and they still pump it out to feed. And then the land has been sinking. It's, it's sunk probably 40, 50 feet in, in oh. 25, 30, 50 years. Holy There's cow. these signs out here. Here's the picture right here where you can see how far, how much this whole California has just been sinking because it's just gotten so dry. The land here is, around me is so saturated. Fields are now lakes and things like that. I mean, it's just, woo. So I've got to imagine that 
this is really going to be filling up the groundwaters once again and uh, like balancing deeper, it out. Deeper underneath the rock. The weather, um, the weather altering technology, because that's been apparently around since the 1940s. Obviously not as powerful as it is these days, but it got to the point where it was so blatantly obvious when we sit there watching the news and we say, oh, look, a huge mother of a tornado had just created itself overnight. And the, the meteorologists mm -hmm. are going, it takes three days at least to grow something that big. How did that happen? Oh, look, here's one. And it's going along at this angle. And then it took a right angle turn and it headed towards, I don't know, was it heading towards Mexico or somewhere? And then it dissipated. Yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> you know, and the mainstream media are like, oh, that's just amazing. Thank goodness. And the rest of us are going, oh, come on. Who's playing with the toys? Someone's got hold of those toys and, and they are... Yeah. It's a gangster stuff, right? It's it's uh, pressuring entire areas or countries or whatever. Do as you're told, or we're just going to decimate you. Mm. In the early '80s, I was at university and I took a meteorology class, and it was just commonly common knowledge that they did uh, cloud seeding, yeah. which was they really I think you right. put um, twenty aluminum, years ago. little bits of aluminum. Twenty more than that, isn't it? Yeah, twenty, forty. Why, why did they tell you in the you '80s, early putting... '80s? Why did they tell you Pardon? they were putting... Um, um, in order to create more rain. But at any rate, it, it, when p I hear people going, oh, chemtrails, that's such bullshit conspiracy theory stuff. They, and I really? was like, wait, I, like, they, I knew I've known about this from a science teacher <laughs> in the 80s. So it happening. Yeah, yeah. So weather changes, <clears throat> while some of their mainstream media is really desperately trying to sell us that this horrible danger is coming and it's all because of our carbon footprint and now we have to spend all our taxpayer money doing all this crazy stuff, the Green New Deal, to reduce our carbon footprint. And it's been a sham all along, global mm. warming. I, I read a book, it was a novel actually, but uh, it's all around the politics around this global warming stuff set back in the 90s, I think, uh, uh, like a murder mystery. But the author, Ken Follett, I think, um, lists on the back like 50 or 40 or 50 articles that is where he got information talking about the the falsity of the global warming scam interesting uh there was fractal uh, time greg braddon his his um, book talked about how every uh, he'd done massive um ice core samples of 200,000 years worth or something and found every 25,000 years there is upset um as we move from one part of the galaxy to another uh, and it's about 30 years where you get more extreme weather and then it all comes down again afterwards. But why, why would nobody listen to somebody who had taken a, an ice core sample of 200,000 years? Why would you not listen to someone like that? That's... Well, that's one of the big problems with our science is, one, it's dumbed down. What is still being taught in our public school systems is a version of physics that has been proven to be incorrect for decades, but still they're teaching it, for example. And science is really a very rigid, dogmatic arrogant. thing. <laughs> you know, it's an arrogant thing. We know about this. And it's like, no, you don't. There's so much well, you don't know. You can't answer my questions. So don't tell well, me that you're pushed. an expert. You have to publish papers. If you're in academia, especially, you have to pub, you know, publish your papers and it has to follow the line that's already been accepted. You can't do something new. It, I mean, it's like being Galileo, you know, <laughs> they're going to it's it's worse than religion. You know, that was a re religion was trying to stop him from saying the uh, well, sun now? is the center. and um, It's heliocentric, not Earthocentric, terracentric, eh, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so, but now it's science that's playing that role. Yeah. That I think also you'll get people stuff. that are, what I've heard, even, even just at parties, people here, no matter what job they have, they go, I've been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, so I know what I'm talking about. They, they get very proud of the mm. progress that they've made or the things that they've learned through that time. 
to the point where their ego takes over and they're just not open to saying, well, I probably only know 5% of it. Like nobody says that. They all like, I know, I know more than you. So don't try and tell me. And I'm like, well, actually, mm. I'm only asking you a question. I'm not telling you anything at all. <laughs> you know, it's this this ego thing. There's a lot that's uh, I think as we move through this, and there will be huge truths coming out in science, in weather, in in every area, in our yeah, history, starting. right? In our history, that that there's going to have to be a whole lot of people that are just going to have to drop their ego aside and go, well, <laughs> let's start again and have a laugh about it. You can't be too precious and, oh, I've learnt this for so many years. No, no, just let it go. We have to get the song Global out. Global cognitive dissonance. Huge. I think um, a sign of an evolved soul, an intelligent soul but an evolved soul, is to be willing to t take that cognitive dissonance and rethink and we, we get faster you know, change at Change your right? beliefs based on new information. Be willing to let your worldview be wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't think that's intelligence. Uh, that's, that's wisdom. I would say there's the difference between the two. Intelligence is how well you use your brain. The wisdom is more how your intuitive side of things. You kind of go, perhaps. actually, yeah, this new, this new knowledge, actually that feels so much better. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like just clicking back into into alignment again oh yeah that's that's right um and then i think i think the first or, time i was given wrong the wrong advice that i struggled i struggled with change but once once you've done it a couple of times you move quite quickly right so you get given oh actually we're upside down we're the other way around oh okay oh right so blah, blah, blah. right okay all right and you, and you, you <laughs> figure it out much quicker you know <laughs> i I think the first time I really hit cognitive dissonance was when I was 10, 10, maybe 11. Um, and I, ha I was riding horses and I had this absolute crush on this horse. And uh, at some point, somebody taught me that when you see something, you're not what you're seeing is the light reflecting off of it. And I just went, oh, God, I've never seen him. I've never seen Bugs Bunny. That was the horse. The name, name of the horse. <laughs> White, big ears. Uh, really a dorky horse. I don't know why. Well, I guess ha, two dorks, dorks like each other. <laughs> Looking back on it, it's so silly. And eventually I got to the place where was like, well, that's what seeing is actually. A long video that I watched that was came from, I will find it and bring it, put the link in here from, uh, I think it was an exopolitics here in Sydney doing a, a um, it wasn't Sydney, it might've been Queensland, doing a lecture on the new children and their skills and things. <clears throat> and how they can pick up these, if they, if they don't naturally have them, they can pick them up super quick, much faster than us adults will be able to do. And they were teaching these kids, they had like, they were like ski goggles, they were very long though, like this. So they completely covered all the light. And these kids were learning to read books and look at colors with completely blind. These two eyes were blind. So huh. when, you're, when you're talking about those energies of, of, light reflecting off it or being able to choose whether it's red or green, these kids will be able to tell the difference. The way they explained it was the third eye is seeing. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to explaining it, but it's kind of, it's one of your clear, isn't it? Like clairvoyance, clear audience kind of. Neat. Yeah. So some of the other signs that we are well into the shift, mm -hmm. certain scenarios just aren't flying anymore uh, to, to that the mainstream media tries to sell us. The Covington High School boys uh, situation yes. is one, and the other is Jesse Smollett, the actor. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. I, I, everybody's like really dumping on this guy, and I actually feel kind of sorry for him <laughs> because he got used. He, yeah, he was there as a pawn in the in the game, wasn't he? Yeah, and now he's he's been made into a, an a idiot. Fool. I yeah. mean, everybody around the world is laughing at him. Yeah, but you know well, what? Everybody, you know but... what's really interesting though is that if that event was meant to set off this anti lynching thing, and that's not going to fly either. You know what's crazy about that? That means that everybody in that state now knows that there is no uh, anti-lynching law, that they can go and lynch people. That is where it's just completely opposite 
it's it's not even like oh I'll just uh, put this out, silly boy, you know. It's actually worse than that because it means that once they start I know. arresting these people, all the time. and if they get yeah. out on bail and they're on the street, that somebody could beat them to death because of the crimes that they have committed. It's complete well, opposite. Let's hope it isn't interpreted that way. I, I think, think it will be. It's in our best interest for citizens to be. No, lynching. it's terrible. The whole point of us is to try and get everyone to keep calm, right? Let justice take its course. Um, but the fact that everybody knows now that there's no lynching law. Interesting. It will have an effect. Uh, the stuff that the cabal's trying to do is back, backing up on them. Backfiring. Backfiring on them. The There's word. the word. Yes. Yeah, um, what else? The measles outbreak as well. Outbreak oh, of measles. It's like, really? We've all had measles. I had German measles. <laughs> I had English measles. I had mumps. I had chicken pox. I had whooping cough. I'm still here. I got sick yep. for we went to second spotty to for a week. Yeah. <laughs> it stuck us all in the same bed, so we all got it. And we'd all be sick yeah. for a week, and Get then it we're all fine. Done it once. Mm. And then you have lifelong immunity, unlike with mm. the immunizations. But that's that's something that I think is actually being brought out more too, and one of those things that's being disclosed. Ooh, another that thing that's super while. disclosed mm. right now. Mm. Yeah, Hollywood and human trafficking yeah. as an over. Macaulay Culkin um, sitting there tweeting away watching the Oscars. That one eats babies and this one, you know. Oh, right. And so that the, was we're kind of, you, you watch how people are looking at it. Sometimes they're looking at the person that he's talking about and at the same time they're looking back at Macaulay Culkin like, are you okay? <laughs> 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 how did you survive? You were a child actor. How did you, uh, you're still alive. How, how on earth did that happen? Or are you just really disturbed or are you telling the truth? And so it's got people questioning, which is shaking it up anyway, isn't it? Regardless of whether he's right or not. Exactly. He's, he's getting people questioning. I think one of the reasons Hollywood is so, has gotten so vehemently and even violently angry at Trump is that he used to be one of them. Wow. You know, he was in their crowd and supposedly he said that he went to on the lowly express to Epstein Island, but when he found out what they were doing there, he didn't go anymore. So I don't know how true that is, but that's something I've read, but I, that made sense to me that, you know, he was, he was in the club. So they see him and now as a he's turned on the club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't anybody asked Trump the question? Who is QAnon is real? Yeah. And, to me, I think, what's going to happen after that? That'll give you an answer as to why this has ha, ha, can't happen yet, why it's taking so long. Um, because if he an addresses it without, you know, sidelining around it or laughing it off or whatever, if he says, no, it's not real, then there's going to be a revolution, I think. Either way, it, though, right? If he says right. yes or no. Well, and if he says, yes, this is the real deal, I'm part of this secret thing and this is what we're doing if that's true then that means all the stuff that q's been writing about has to be true also right and which is huge really, yeah right this shift we're going through the alliance team and the white hats are trying to do it without uh, with as little trauma drama and overt violent revolution as possible which I appreciate. <laughs> yes. And I think that no one's going to ask that question until they are at the point where they have much more control than they do now. Meaning, who, who, Who's they when you say that? The good guys. Right. White hats. Right. Right? Because uh, it's just, it's too much of a shock for people to go, wait a minute. That's true. I mean, I just remember th telling uh, somebody I know a year ago or more, uh, oh, I just read this article that they busted this cop for child porn and that they got him because he was using the um, pizza words in his emails inappropriately or excessively oh. or something like that. And the shock was like, you mean that was real? Right. And that hit the wall. And then this person went, huh, stood up and walked out of the room. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this person doesn't even remember that conversation. It hit two huge 
of a cognitive dissonance wall. She couldn't get over it. She couldn't get around it. She couldn't get under it. She backed off. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know. The bigger the bigger the thing, the bigger the disclosure, the more that is going to shock people. And how are they going to cope with it? The idea is to get as much of the the, um, population aware of what's going on, doing the research and following the crumbs and so forth, that enough people have gotten through that cognitive dissonance that we have those people who are not going to freak out so they get enough people so that when it really hits and those people who didn't choose to take the red pill but had stuff down their throats are getting freaked out that we can keep the calm. That's it. Hold them back. Because, you know, when you suddenly discover your favorite actor who you've loved for decades and decades has now just been arrested for something appalling. Or, yes. um, I mean, politicians, we are all quite happy to criticize politicians. But when that happens, or in the media, you know, like sometimes I talk to people who are older in, in their 70s and 80s, they totally trust the media. And so for them to suddenly realize that how much dishonesty has been offered to them, the media, the people that currently work in the media that weren't there decades ago, as I said before in another episode that we've done, there are people in there that are good people and they're trying to do a good job. And the material they're being given to broadcast is inaccurate. It's wrong. Um, and so they're going to be in the firing line. People are going to be lynching them as well. We really have to keep it, keep the calm because you don't know who to beat up. <laughs> you know, you can't just beat up any person. It's like when Diana, Princess Diana died and some, this is when I was in New Zealand, and some journalist in the South Island of New Zealand, it's quite rural, some journalist got punched in the face because she was part of the media that killed Diana. You see now how oh yeah. this like complete opposite end of the world, but because she represented the media, she got it in the face. So we are going to have to be very careful, try and keep everybody calm. Do not punch someone just because they are part of a group, because every group will have good people in it as well as crazy people, just deceitful people. Mm. Oh, but we, we have I got know, so many good things be. going on but there, right? So it, the, 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 what we're running through today is, is, the, is the proof. Right. The proof it's been show. exposed. Yeah, we are, we're on our way. We've got so many good things happening. They're really snowballing now. And, uh, they are. Yeah. Enjoy the ride is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. At least my intuition is saying, yeah, that's true. So a good way to help everyone, I think, is just to go, realize taking that breath, breathe that in. We're well into the shift. We're navigating it pretty well. And it's going to be exciting. You know, we're going to have solar flashes and all this crazy stuff is going to be happening. But it's going to be like the biggest historic moment ever. And we're all living through it. And it's happening now. And just breathe that in and expand that out. And that puts that wave into the universe and supports that reality there's a reason we are the center of all of this us on the planet this planet the chosen you know, these people to be. with all this huge amounts of emotions and bright colors and all the intensity here is like ooh, you know they want some of our dna and so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're the stars we are the biggest show in the universe at the moment you, you're very precious and you just stand tall in your own shoes if you've got legs. Some people don't, but stand tall and <laughs> understand. Oh, this is my geeky side. And you've got to we co- cover really all possibilities here. <laughs> yeah, we, we're all precious and we're all making this happen. Keep it loving, calm, we're on our way. Bye-bye. Ta-ta.